This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, welcome back. Hey, everybody, and uh, hello to my co host, like always. Hello, Leon. Hello there. Hey, um, today is another special episode. If you listen to number 12, that was a recording of the announcement that, that the Mordic community had to make a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And today we thought that we have so many things to talk about that we would skip the interview and purely dedicate this episode to Mordic 3 and to the community version 3. Um, we only have a l tiny little bit of housekeeping, so let's get going with that. Yeah, uh, coming to housekeeping, we have a follow-up from our last, no, 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 I think episode 11 it was, the interview with uh, Alex Hammerschmidt. Uh, we talked about the Shopify, Shopify plugin and our friend Izzy Shopee Mohammed. Shopify. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pi is not bad though. And our friend uh, Izzy Mohammed from Egypt, he also released uh, a Shopify plugin called Mikato. And I think he talked to you and you got a bit more info about that. That's right. Uh, immediately after we aired the last interview with, with, with Alex, uh easy came up and said hey i do have a shopify integration as well and his approach is is pretty much the opposite of of alex one and i did talk to easy quite a bit and i also uh, talked uh, to alex and followed up with him and i think both approaches are very very good ones um the one is um that that easy did is to say okay here's a plugin Go ahead and uh, do the integration yourself. Uh, the approach from, from Alex's side is, okay, if you want automation, here's a full service package. I can do it for you, for your Shopify system. Um, and for, for both, uh, there is a dem demand. And um, I'm very happy that we now, out of the blue, have a plugin, uh, the, the pure plugin uh, for Mordic as well. And um, that's available on shopify.com slash Mikato, or apps.shopify.com, I should say, <laughs> slash mi Mikato. Yeah. Um, again, that's just a plugin. It's not a SaaS service, and it's uh, 40 bucks a month at this point. Um, Easy says that the, when, when he developed the plugin, that was heavier on the Shopify side than on the Mordic side, which was pretty straightforward. Good to, good to hear that. Mm -hmm. He also tested with larger number of clients and products, so that should all be fine. And he did release a YouTube video to demonstrate the, the plugin and the installation too, which also seems pretty state, uh, straightforward. I have to admit, we didn't test that ourselves. We are not Shopify users at all. Um, but just today I talked to uh, a Mordic user in Prague who is currently starting to use it. He discovered the plugin independently and has a need for that. And uh, he promised to give me feedback on how it went. If you do have any feedback, do let me know. Yeah, nice. Um, and coming to the next point, I teasered it in the last episode also already. Um, we talked about the Google season of docs, and as I'm more or less responsible for the team education and the knowledge base, I'm happy to announce that we got accepted with all our three projects, meaning the end user, <laughs> the end user documentation, <laughs> the um, knowledge base, uh, as well as the developer documentation. Uh, we all got accepted, and now we are looking for uh, people who are interested and who start contributing and I'm super excited and yeah, it's I'm still kind of overwhelmed that we got into it. I, I mean, yeah. I, I hope how many, so. But. How, how many applications do you have so far? Um, uh, about 20 and above and uh, one is already accepted so we have two slots left so keep on uh, writing your applications and come and maybe you will get in yeah it's a cool opportunity for everybody who is in technical writing so um leon i 
I, I'm really excited, maybe more than you, that uh, Mordic has this acceptance in Google and, and has this chance to improve even on the documentation side. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, good job. Super cool. And uh, being uh, on a topic called Super Cool, I stumbled at it across our Super Cool forum and <laughs> I found the question, <laughs> which was interesting. Uh, somebody asked who is paying for our podcast. And that's a question I found pretty interesting because I don't think we ever answered it yet. But you will yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think I should. It's an excellent question because it 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 makes obvious the the, the point that people have uh, or may have a misunderstanding of what this thing is, what of what this podcast is. Um, so it is not an Acquia marketing podcast. It is not an agency podcast by ourselves. Uh, we are contributing all the work as an agency, but we are also collaborating with a lot of community members. So it is yep. a pure community podcast. Nobody is paying for it. Nobody is paying us. We're just donating our time and uh, passion, basically. If, if we should ever accept sponsorship, uh, that's cool. We're happy to do that, <laughs> but uh, that <laughs> will also clearly be stated and um, um, visible. So we're not affiliated in any way with Acquia or other or others. Um, I, I would like to add that that I like the people in Acquia. Um, I think they are a, a perfect match for the Mordic, Mordic open source project, and and I. I respect their, their behavior, they let us do our thing and um, are only involved on the highest level in a positive way. So, yeah, good relationship there. Yeah, true. Good, which brings us to Mordic 3. Again, yeah. we're, we're focusing here on Mordic version 3 uh, and community version 3, which happened to coincident on, on the same in the same area of time. Uh, we're recording this on June 15th and we're really optimistic that this week we will see the release of Mordic 3. Incredible, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> we, had a, <laughs> we had another delay. It was expected earlier, but, but I'm optimistic that this time it's really going, going to happen. If, and if not, we are going to send out this <laughs> podcast nonetheless. So uh, either have, you have a good laugh or, laugh or, or not, um, or, or we're very happy. Um, if, if you are um, a current Mordic user, um, Leon, what, what should you do before upgrading? Um, you should test... Uh Mordic 3, if possible. There's a, a super nice uh, yeah, uh, documentation about how to set up a test environment. and uh, We should link that in the uh, show notes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also, if you're a developer out there, you should uh, get your plugin ready for Mordic 3. Uh, the Shopify plugin we talked about earlier is already ready for Mordic 3, but uh, not all the plugins are yet. And the more plugins we have ready for Mordic 3, the better pretty straightforward yeah, i think the i think the plugins that, that come with the core should all be good to go with modic 3 yeah because that's covered by the core team at this point for everybody else it's not too hard to upgrade if if it's a really old cold code that you have then maybe it's more of this uh, uh, so-called deprecated stuff that you need to remove but but even that is not a big deal so go ahead and do it and be, be up to date with Mordic 3, that'd be great. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, fingers crossed that, that we'll have Mordic 3, as we now have Community 3. And uh, what that means is pretty much covered uh, in the live announcement that we had a while ago, yeah. where the, the Ruth, along with the leadership team, announced all the various changes the same thing is available as a recording in episode 12 of the modic cast so if you have not had the chance to listen in you can get the full picture in episode 12 uh, so what i'd like to do here is just a really 
quick 10,000 feet overview of the changes. Yep. And uh, obviously the, the most prominent one is the uh, fact that D.B. Hurley, David Hurley, the founder and, and um, uh, inventor of, of Mordic as a product and as a company, um, we know he is no longer uh, no longer was was Acquia and hasn't been for a while. Um, and he came to a point where he said, uh, "Being a project lead on a part time basis is not such a great idea." Um, so he asked Ruth to replace him as a full time project lead. Ruth is our former community manager. Uh, she is now in charge as the project lead for Mordic, and uh, I think we couldn't have had a better choice because she's not only super experienced, has been f with Mordic from day one, knows all the people and, and knows uh, the industry and everything, but also she's really, really motivated, really, really positive, and um, brings a lot of energy to Mordic and to the world. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, on the other end, um, DB is, is keen to emphasize that he's not gone. He is he's, uh, there as a consulting part, as a representative part. He, uh, the role is described as the ambassador to Mordic. Um, and we're in the process of <laughs> hammering out what that really means and how to fill this with life but he, he's r still very attached uh, to the product and to to the pro um to community yeah other than that um recycle really briefly um has been uh, changed to what we call semantic versioning for a while Mm -hmm. um, so we basically have the major releases, the minor releases, and the patch releases. Uh, starting with with the latter patch release is really just bug fixes and is now expected to be released every single month. So if there is any bugs or or p other security f or security fixes or other bugs that way, <laughs> um, that'll be either be fixed immediately if it's urgent or on a monthly basis if it's not so urgent. Yep. Um, then the minor releases are those that introduce new features without breaking anything. Um, those are now scheduled to be there quarterly. So every single quarter we'll see a bunch of new releases. And then uh, the major releases are those who do introduce breaking changes, who do require a migration rather than just uh, installing a piece of code. Uh, those are not scheduled. The only point there is we will see them as rarely as possible, but they will occur on a, on a, on a certain uh, in a certain certain rhythm. So s definitely not more than than once per year. Hopefully less than once per year. Yep. But we, mm -hmm. we do need the breaking changes, otherwise we cannot upgrade the the, the internals, we cannot improve on, on performance and stuff like that. So database model, uh, all, all like that, API, all breaking changes. We, we'll have to see that, and so there will be a Mordic 4 eventually. Yeah, that's uh, the release cycle, there's more to it, like, like long-term support, etc., but that, that'll do for now. Um, other changes in the production or in the product and the coding area, some uh, involve process and technical things like, like better testing, uh, more direct integration of documentation, uh, like, like definition of done, uh, stuff like that. And then we have new things like uh, a triage team that is responsible for um, speeding up the process of, of uh, handling inquiries. So if there's an issue, if there's a uh, code contribution, anything like that, um, we want to make sure there's no backlog of that, there's no queuing um, and uh, obsolete stuff. <laughs> uh, but everything is handled as fast as possible, but um, 
in, in a quality manner too. And that's what the triage team is going to be there for. The other change is that in, in the actual coding or in, in, in the actual product improvement uh, area, we will go away from here is the team that's responsible for the product and then move into here is a little team that is in responsible for this part of the product and here's another little team that's responsible for that part of the product. As you could imagine like uh, this team is for email, this team is for focus items, this team is for tracking, etc. And that little team has a direct relationship to the outcome. So that means they know their stuff very well, they, everybody knows who to ask, they own all the fame, they know the, the industry and, and, and uh, are constantly looking for improvements and make, make sure they now have the best email system in the world, the best focus item in the world, the best tracking in the world. Um, so, in, including uh, good usability, um, including good documentation and tutorials and, and, and all that. And um, that way, with, with a bunch of little, really little teams, we will then be able to have improvements out of every single team every quarter and thus a, a firework of improvements <laughs> for Mordic, Mordic as a whole. Yep, perfect. As a side effect, the fact that it's just a small group of people uh, who is working on, on a certain area, that makes it really easy for new people to come on board. If you imagine, uh, I am a developer, I want to get started mm. with Mordic contribution. Right now, there's, uh, there's uh, like like a, f a sea of, of, of people and, and I don't know where to start and I don't know what to do and who to talk to etc and now it becomes much much easier I can just say okay um, I want to get started I have a good idea for this area so I uh, dedicate myself to that topic for a while I know how to, to talk to and I immediately uh, get something done and, and uh, feel good about it uh, or if my company has a special interest in, in some some area, or um, if a Mordic team says, okay, um, to get started, would you be interested in that area? And, and I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, in all of these situations, it, it makes it much more scalable, much more personal, and, and, and in total, much better. So I, I'm very excited about, about that concept. As you may hear. On the other end of uh, scale or sc scaling and, and leveraging all the potential is the one thing that we talked about a couple of times already, and that is the international multi-language communities. And uh, that was referred to in the, re in the announcements, but um, that is exactly the topic that I would like to discuss in our interview part in a second. So, after all these news, we also uh, we also had a Q and A part, uh, and all that was in multiple languages. So it directly ties in into the international communities. Um, so w we had this uh, initial announcement in English, but it was then repeated in other languages. It was um, translated by local language people, and then even the Q and A was. Uh, taken by by local people and answered by Ruth in that case. Um, yeah, in the Q and A there was a lot of things about Modic three, but but also some specific questions about the community. And if you're interested, I I suggest you go back to episode twelve and, and hear it in your local language. Coming to questions and answers, I got a question for you. Oh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> as we know now that uh, Ruth uh, will be the project lead, uh, she's having the role as a community manager. Also, do we have a new community manager? Is she like picking both roles at the same time? What's the situation? Mm. Ah, excellent question. No, actually, no, nobody asks that in the Q and A part. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let, let me back up a little bit. First of all, um, the project lead is an instance, a role that 
is by definition um, d defined by, or not defined, but but uh, is um, oh, I don't have the word crap. Um, so Acquia says who is a project lead, whatever yeah. that is in English. Acquia um, chooses the project lead. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so so far Ruth was a community manager paid by Acquia. So that was like a donation to the community that Acquia said, okay, here's a, a person who is uh, helping the community yep. get themselves structured and grow. Um, now they said, uh, yeah, let Ruth be the new community Uh, the, the new project lead and by the way there was a suggestion by the community leadership team it was not an acquia suggestion um just like like all of the decisions that that we just talked about and explained are all community decisions and none of that was was vetoed or anything questions uh, or question by by acquia in any way um now okay acquia said We're fine with it. Let let Ruth be the project lead, and yes, we're going to going to find a new community manager and pay that person as well. So uh, that's appreciated. Uh, they're going to pay for a new community manager. The only problem is we need to find one. True. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where we are, mm -hmm. and I, I I fear it's going to take multiple months if if you. Yeah, if you Leon or if you or if you dear listener out there have any suggestion might be interested yourself or or have anybody in mind um, I, I understand that we still uh, are very open to suggestions so please by all means let me know or let Ruth know um, and uh, let's go and find a new community manager because that's really important to to free uh the the time that ruth spends today yep. uh it's it's it is working today but it's it doesn't scale and it, it, it's not going to work forever to do ro both roles at a time yeah, that's so, true. excellent question thanks for that one <laughs> good um hmm. anything else before we go to the interview uh not from my side no Okay, not from my thought either. So let's move on. And this interview is also a special interview because it's me interviewing myself. Uh, no, not <laughs> even myself that. and I. <laughs> yeah, so it's a threesome interview. Um, no, it's, it's just a little bit of reflections or explanations about the concept of the native communities. Um, I thought it's, it's a perfect time to explain that a little bit more because we now start with... with uh, trying it out in reality and because we do want to scale that into other languages as well um, here's my thoughts about it oh thanks leon thanks Eki. this is Eki speaking from the past about something that we talked about multiple times now and uh, that is about to become reality it is a really important task in the community team and I made the prom promise to uh, be, become more detailed about it. Uh, we, we did write and discuss a paper and we're now at the next step and that is very easily try this whole thing out for my own native language and that is the German speaking region. Um, let's start with the big picture and that is uh, Obviously, Mordic is used around the world. It is a global thing. We have a lot of official things like the Mordic.org website with various translations, uh, like Brazilian or Japanese website. Early things not really kept up to date, outdated really. Um, so not in good condition. Um, we have the Mordic.com still. We have various subdomains like like forums, docs, handbook, whatever, uh, of uh, Mortic, and we have the community places where people meet, such as uh, Slack, uh, forums, of course, but also LinkedIn and Facebook, where we do have official groups. Plus, we do have the official teams. We have sprints and other official official events as well. 
And then on the other hand, we have third party initiatives like uh, content of all sorts in many languages. We also have lots of groups in Facebook and in LinkedIn and in other local community platforms and also in various languages too. Some active, most not so active or never active. Um, we do have regular meetups in some places. We also have one-time events. Uh, you may call them Morty camps or, or whatever they are called. However, all of the, or, well, <laughs> not all of this, but 99% but, uh, of all that is more or less business driven. It's uh, for SEO purposes, it's for lead generation, whatever, for, for just for owning something, um, which is fair, um, but um, it cannot be all. We, we, we do want more. Third party is good, but we do want first party. And why? First of all, um, we need to look at the user, at the, the actual Mautic user, and uh, especially those who begin with Mautic are easily confused by the lack of a clear focal point. Um, there are many voices talking to them. They don't know where they are. They may even be misled. The quality varies. Lots of outdated or even incorrect content out there. And of course, the, the total visibility of Mordic.org is worse than it could be. On the other hand, all content about Mordic is good and we, we do embrace that uh, in general. However, the community tends to be scattered. So, so if I go to, if I'm a newbie and I go to Facebook or LinkedIn or other places and look for the right place for Mautic to be, then I'll end up signing up to 10 groups or so just to make sure I don't miss, miss the best one. And uh, once again, most of those group, groups are not very active. The impression that it remains is not so superb. And only if I'm lucky, I, I find the right places. Um, or maybe there even is none for, for my language very possible. Mm, so community is scattered, it is disconnected within the language and, and even more so uh, disconnected from the rest of the world. We are not leveraging the whole potential for community dynamics and uh, for contribution of all sorts of a global community. And that includes ways for comp contribute, contributing content that is already there that has been created anyway that is really the the easiest option for contribution to say okay i have something here on my website and i am okay with donating that to mortic.org that's by the way some, something that that came up when we discussed this whole situation with our german community where we do have a non-commercial community called uh, mordicamp.org for historical reasons. Nowadays it's called Mordic Meetup Online for DACH, that is uh, the German-speaking German countries. Um, so we, we did discuss a lot of this situation, but, but specifically uh, contributing content, there was the idea to say, uh, hey, if the Mordic project just provides a structure where we can um, put um, existing content by certain rules so without be being um, marketing driven or salesy um, that is a quick win that we should strive for and I discussed that with Leon already and then the education team is going there okay so we had that discussion we had other things if you listen to the podcast episodes in, in the past you, we, we time and again came to the point that uh, communities in other languages are experiencing a language barrier. They, they stay on their own because they do not feel comfortable speaking or communicating in, in English, and especially uh, interactive communicating, uh, in, uh, com communication is a real barrier. So we need to overcome that. And uh, of course, the community team 
which I'm the team lead of in, in Mordic.org, made this whole thing, this whole situation a priority, and that's where we are. Um, now, the approach is, <laughs> on, on a high level, is, is very straightforward and, and natural, because there's no way around it. We need sub-communities that are language-based. We need a Japanese language community, we need a French, a, a Spanish, a, a Portuguese, a German language community to make sure we address those um, parts of the world in the most successful way. Um, optionally, we, we can add more to it, like, like uh, limit it to certain regions of the same culture, so English, an English community in India would be a thing, or English in the Middle East, or you name it, um, Portuguese in Brazil, Brazil obviously. Mm, now, yeah, that's nice ideas, and what does it mean, what's the nature of such a sub-community, quote-unquote? Um, it's important to understand that we're not talking about pure user groups, it's, it's much, much more. The other concept is that it is, once again, non-commercial. It's not branded, it's not lead creation. It is really a community thing. And it is a long-term effort. So um, there will be people within those communities who show up and then leave, like we know it from every user group. And on the other hand, there will be people who have uh, a long-term dedication to Mordic, and therefore um, it makes sense for them to have a long-term dedication to, to their local community and to the local success of Mordic. Typically, there will be uh, Mordic service providers, like agencies or, or developers or, or all sorts of Mordic professionals. Uh, but of course, there will also be Mordic users who use the product in their daily life and came to love it and have a personal um, interest in, in, in doing more and, and being a more integral part of, of this thing and, and uh, enjoying the fact that it's open source and uh, that it is embracing and everything. So uh, that's community people. Um, as I said, it can it can also be a starting point for beginners. It is completely okay for those to show up, uh, find help, find directions, and then vanish again. That's natural. Um, all this is is really a core of, of what we find to be the, the goals of, of the whole concept. So to allow people to connect with other Mordic users in their own language and in their own culture. And as we know, even the, the own time zone can be an issue if, if, we, if you are completely elsewhere in the world. So allow people, allow people to um, connect really easily and effortlessly, said it. <laughs> um, and obviously, uh, places for that is, is, is groups and, and forums, is meetups online and in real life, it's events, it's uh, contribution sprints, etc. Um, so uh, that is really the basis for everything else. One thing on top of it is what I mentioned, mentioned earlier is, is to build a bridge and to, to provide some sort of connection to the rest of the world without hitting a language barrier. And uh, we will talk about that in a second. Um, then the, the starting point for newbies, the local language starting point, the active onboarding in all local channels, as well as the so global Slack channels, etc., cetera, um, is another good thing. So if, if people feel the interaction when they get started with, with Mordic, that's very positive for everybody. The other much higher level thing is to maintain the localization of, of Mordic. Right now we do have pretty good localization of the product itself, 
but of course there's always room for improvement. Uh, that could be one thing that that this local community or local language community can easily take over responsibility for the localization of Mordic itself, but also for uh, educational things like like documentation or tutorials and then videos, etc., be it with subtitles. Um, with with marketing things, well, let's say say we have a press release or a blog post on on Mordic three release. Um, why not localize that? And, and we now would have the, the the structure to do that with our own community means, which is which is superb, and it supports the value and, and the success of Mordic in your own market. So why not do that effort? Uh, of course, when it comes to translating the entire mordic.org website that is a monster not the website but the task it's not a one-time thing but an ongoing effort uh, and i suspect we will even see that for some markets where it's really important for the german market i can say that it is not a killer not a showstopper to have an english only website for an open source project but of course it would be lovely to have a German website and a German pitch deck and a German Twitter channel and, and all that. But realisti realistically, that's not a top priority to me. It's it's just uh, something for the mature communities. What we can also see is uh, that unique content is contributed locally, let's say with a German tutorial on a specific thing. And that could then be translated into English to grow our global content pool and maybe even get back uh, get translated back to other languages then. Um, the interaction between distinct uh, sub-communities is an interesting thing, by the way, too. Uh, so let's say the German community learning from the French community or a concept that has proven to work well in the Japanese community being taken over by all other or by, by whoever else in the world. That's also an interesting thing and uh, there will be a forum for that as well. You, yeah, there's, there's even more in, in terms of goals and in terms of things that could be done like proactive things, um, going places, uh, giving talks, uh, even going to exhibitions and other events and representing the Mordic community as opposed to, uh, let's say, an agency or, or some, some other Mordic provider. That'd be great. And uh, in, in Germany, we actually have that too, that, that people from multiple companies go to a trade show and represent Mordic. And uh, I love it. It's a, it's a cool thing. It's also a nice value for networking once we're back to real life events it's uh, always good to spend a day together yeah and and once again the the building a bridge to the global teams is is a bit more tricky but tremendously valuable that's not only about uh let's say coding so if I, i'm a developer and I want to contribute to a certain area of Mordic. Um, that's one thing, but but it's even even giving ideas or, or um, visions is, is a valuable thing, or testing in, in something is a valuable thing, and, and none of that is currently possible unless you are really good at English or halfway good. So um, building that bridge needs to be solved and, and the idea here is very simple to say okay within the Japanese community we do have certain people who have the connection and have the English language to to build a bridge to the global communities so, and if there is a marketing person a an education person a um, developer or whatever uh, and, and he or she wants to contribute to the actual Mautic marketing team without being able to um, 
to speak very good English, but maybe being a good designer, then it would be perfect if, if we have a, a, a another pe a person from the Japanese community who is part of the marketing team or who connects to the marketing team and just makes makes the connection and then maybe provide some back and forth on the way. So that's that's that. Um, besides those specific connections in into teams, there's a general connection um, and also the interconnection between those sub communities, which probably will will require some sort of team lead and co-lead as we have in other teams as well. So all the sub-communities and native communities uh, will select their own team leads and, and then replace them eventually, etc. Make sure that, peop uh, that, that things keep going, uh, that, that they are represented uh, well in the global community and that, that they basically um, go forward and then blossom as, as uh, in, in their own country. Uh, again, the, the bridges into the other communi uh, community teams do not have to be built by the team leads, but we do need a team lead for certain things. And that already takes us to to the question of how to implement this this nice and abstract ideas. Um, so we do need people, of course. And uh, in, in Germany, where we tried this out, it is basically a, a pilot to verify the, con uh, to the concept and then roll it out to a handful of other countries and then even further. Um, in Germany, or rather for the German-speaking countries, um, we, we did write down what it really takes. And um, except, uh, besides people, that we have and uh, team lead and co-lead that we will pick from within these people. There's not too many things that we really need. One thing that is very central is our own page in Mordic.org or rather uh, in the Mordic Confluence or something like a wiki where, where we can place some official content. And uh, that would be stuff like who are the members, who are, what are the responsibilities, um, here are events, maybe a calendar even, or a reminder functionality. These are the, uh, the, the channels where we talk. So this is the official Facebook group or the LinkedIn group or whatever. And this is the official Twitter account if we had one. Also marketing channels, community channels. Uh, definitely some sort of call to actions like a Here's how to, to join us, here's how to ask questions or make suggestions or to contribute or to sponsor or whatever it comes to mind. Um, yeah, speaking of the official channels, um, that's I think an important thing. We, we know that not everybody is or will start in the Slack community or in the forums. So people do love Facebook, they love LinkedIn. Um, and we do have the official English language channels and it'll be important to figure out which channels we want to do in German language or in any other local language. Maybe it's even completely different social networks in some areas. So that's something for every sub-community themselves to figure out what the active channels are. And that's more about groups here than about social media posts, posts that are um, broadcasted mm, and maybe even the, in the inactive channels there are other networks works where people may try to find something about Mordic and that should po point to the active channels or should point to Mordic.org or to our Confluence page where the active channels are described so Mordic.org Confluence um, social media groups um, some content on, on Mordic.org. And then the other thing is to say, okay, and what are the actions? What are we going to do? That's why we'll have uh, our own JIRA board, which is a task tracking uh, board in, in the Mordic proje uh, project, it was Trello in the past. Um, and so we, we can collect 
ideas, put them on the board, assign names to it, and then in our periodical um, team meetings or uh, community meetings, uh, we, we can then review and uh, decide what's next uh, and who would like to do what. And again, for the German-speaking countries, we do have this regular online meetup, um, which will change in nature a little bit, but, but it will be much more valuable going forward. And maybe we can even iterate on, on that format. But that is, of course, um, the, 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 the central point where movement and uh, development in this community is going to be uh, organized. Ooh, so oh, this is much longer than expected, but but let me try to sum up really quick now. Um, first of all, we do want independent initiatives of all kinds. That's been true in the past, and that's true going forward. Um, and it's okay to have events and sales funnels, etc., on the commercial side, especially if you are a Mautic professional or Mautic service provider company. Um, you're very welcome. We love our ecosystem. It's, it's part of the game. Um, on the other hand, we do want to separate that from the actual community things. Um, and we want to get better on all that. We want to help Mautic better as a product. We want to leverage all the power of, the, of a global community. And after all, we'll make Mautic an all-around better experience for everyone. And we think that's the right concept, and uh, we're trying it out in Germany, and uh, you'll see it in other countries real soon. Well, yeah, there you have it. I, I'm sure I forgot a ton of things, but, but I hope it's more tangible now that it, than it was in the past. Uh, one thing that I did not mention is the name of this those things that we call that I called sub communities um, and the truth is that we still don't know how to really call it personally I'm oscillating between the more technical term native communities like Mautic native communities uh, in Japan or Mautic native communities French so you already notice it's more difficult for languages than for countries um, th so that's on the one end, and and on the other on the other end, on the other end, there's this rather unspecific but much more emotional ideas like like Mordic heroes, French or Mordic heroes, um, Brazil, whatever. Or if you think of a URL, that would be heroes.mordic.org slash brazil heroes.mordic.org slash french um, hmm. let me know what you think maybe you have better ideas maybe you have a clear opinion on one which direction is a better one um, eventually we need to figure out a name too but um, I'm grateful grateful for graceful? no I'm grateful <laughs> I'm grateful for all sorts of feedback, for additional ideas, for, for, for questions of all sorts. Uh, also, let me know if you're interested in starting your own local language community um, on this basis. And um, yeah, that's it for now. Get back to me like, like always. Um, and for now, back to you, Leon, back to you, Eki, back to the future. Bye-bye. That's one of the most interesting self-talks I heard in a long time. <laughs> 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 so, but uh, oh, you're kidding me. That raised the question um, t regarding the Mauticon. Is it uh, central? Like, s will we all go to one place, or will there be like native Mauticon, so to say? Or hmm. Uh, this sounds like a sequel to the our events section. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah, no, no. Okay, l let me explain for everybody. Um, we're not going anywhere, of course, this year. As we know, we're going virtual. Yep. And um, the, the original plan was to do it in, in, 
in a physical location and, and uh, the decision was to do it in, in Boston for 2020 and to Europe in 2021. Uh, now we're doing it in the place called the Interwebs. <laughs> um, and we're doing only one of these in 2020, mm -hmm. but we do have the intention to do it not only in English. So we will have a track, an international track, where we, where we have uh, talks in many languages. Ah. Uh, the main part will be in English. We will also probably have an extra day uh, for tutorials or learning tracks. Um, mm -hmm. that will, that'll be English as well. But there will be international language or, or other language talks um, in the main event. Yep. And by the way, the main event... Uh, you may remember that we had a, a poll, a community poll, which is your favorite um, date. And there was a little bit of a shootout between November 3rd and November 17th. Mm -hmm. And the close winner was 3rd. And once or immediately after we had announced that, uh, it turned out that November 3rd is not such a good idea. But uh, because in a certain part of the world called the U.S., Oh. There are elections, and we don't want to keep anyone from from uh, voting. So the decision was made to move Mordicon to the second best option, and that was November seventeenth. Uh, oh yep. my god, seventeenth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was really a close call anyway. So I think no no harm is done. But um, it it is November seventeenth now. There you go. Good. Um, anything else for today? No, I, I think I'm done, pretty much. <laughs> well, okay, then I would like to remind everybody that we do love feedback and questions. I've received a lot of questions lately on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have other channels, basically everything except uh, Lightsword, Fax, and then... TikTok, <laughs> but everybody, ever, everywhere else you will find uh, the Modicast in English and in German. If nothing else, go to modicast.com um, and uh, do not forget to subscribe, but also give us feedback, do recommend us, and uh, I hope you listen in next time and I can talk to you soon. Until then, bye-bye from my side. Bye, Leon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll